All right, welcome to Health the Second Opinion. Dr. Chad here with you, excited about another day of bringing you some principle so that you can create your health truths and really try to have the life that you deserve. And I'm very pleased to have uh, Dr. Charles Adams, MD, with me here today. Thanks for showing up. Glad to be here. Awesome. And we're going to be talking about, as you can see, we're going to be talking about heart disease and heavy metal detoxification. And we're going to be talking about the tax study and really how access to this information can then allow you to implement um, the results of the study in your own life. And so many people, you know, when we think about uh, the biggest killers in America, we're always talking about cancer and heart disease. And one of the biggest things that I think is uh, that people kind of would gloss over is, is that it's the lifetime of dysfunction that leads to the disease. It's not like the disease just pops up one day. No, it is a lifetime of dysfunction and that dysfunction leads to disease. And so when we think about these things, um, you know, let's talk about uh, the, the study and um, what's, what's the history of the study and what was it actually set out to try to assess? Well, um, first thing is I'm a medical doctor. Yeah, I should have asked to introduce yourself. How about that? I, hey, we'll go with that first. <laughs> and uh, went to graduated from the University of Tennessee uh, Medical School and did my training as an internal medicine specialist and then got interested in things integrative and, and it's just been something else, an interesting ride ever since. And uh, early on, I learned about chelation and uh, saw first, the first person that, that showed me how well he was doing, just, I, I blew it off. I said, no, no way. And about two months later, a similar guy came in with the identical story and he's sitting there in front of me on no medicines his feet aren't swollen. He's not taking microglycerin. And he, he said they wanted to do bypass and I refused. And here I am. And the guy was just, you know, both of them are as healthy as they can be. And I said, okay, no, wait a minute. Something ain't right here. Yeah. Something, something's not adding up. And th that's another attitude that hopefully we can help you to educate your doc because the prevailing attitude is still that chelation is worthless and it's practiced by ignorant, no good charlatans. <laughs> I mean, I can, it, it's, <clears throat> and so, and often the truth, right? Like uh, there's, I forget who said it, but you know, first it's uh, violently opposed and then it's accepting, you know, there's stages of this, you know, and, and a lot of things have come down the pike that we now call, call common today. Yeah. It, our understandings, you know, that the world's not flat and et cetera, et cetera. And, and so I think that this is going to be the next, another thing. Well, hopefully so. But, uh, the, the chelation is a big threat to cash flow to other interested or disinterested interested parties because uh, the first studies about heart disease were published in the 1950s. Wow. And uh, it's, uh, a, it's amazing that, you know, we, we don't, I don't know, but, Maybe it's just my age uh, that I think of the major technological advances happened in the in 2000 and on, yeah. 1990s and on. Uh, I mean, really categorizing some good research back in the 50s. And the well, 90s. just they gathered data. I mean, that's what they did. It's what we do is is gather data and and see what sifts out. And sometimes it doesn't fit with what we think it ought to. You go, whoa. And that's another thing that I like about that, that in that time period where data collection was happening and things that it was science to determine what worked, not science to try to prove a point yeah. or justify a position. Yeah. It was science to see what worked. Well, and also back in the old days, the uh, a journal doesn't accept advertising. As soon as you accept advertising, you've got some, some conflicts there. And in the old days, Physicians used journals to communicate with one another. Hey, I've had these 10 patients. I've done this and here's what my outcome was. Anybody else have any ideas? And it was that give and take of information. And that's what the journals were about. <laughs> Unfortunately, the advertisers, mostly big pharma, have taken it over. Like, don't you worry. We'll, we'll edit this thing here. You know? and yeah. so, uh, Again, science for position. 
you yeah. know? And, and so when we think about, you know, the, the tax study and, and things, let's, uh, let's dive into it. Okay. The, the, uh, they're going back from my, from the, from the mid fifties up to the present, there's been oodles of data collected about chelation, how it's being, it's safe and effective. And, but that's one of the things that the medical boards were, you know, they would just scream bloody murder. It's never been studied. They're probably killing people, but, and they wouldn't look at the data. And, uh, so now they have to, uh, a, a cardiologist who's an interesting gentleman, uh, by the name of Bravazio Lamas. Mm -hmm. He is a Harvard trained, uh, doc, uh, he got $30 million in an NIH, uh, NCCAM, which is the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, to study uh, chelation therapy and prove. And, and he, I think he kind of pitched it like, well, we're going to put a dagger in this heart for once and for all. We're going to, yeah, we'll prove it's no good. Nice. And I think he knew better all along, but they bought into it. And that's how he got the $30 million bucks. And so the TAC study, T-A-C-T, -T, stands for the trial to assess chelation therapy and TACT. And I'll be referring to it as TAC-1, although initially we didn't, you know, if it didn't work, it was just going to be the TAC-1. Mm -hmm. And now actually there's a TAC-3 going. I'll come back to that here in just a minute. But in TAC-1, uh, in order to get into the study, an individual had to be 50 years of age and you had to have had a prior heart attack. You could have had the heart attack when you were 20 years old where you could have had it like, uh, I think you had to be at least three months out for a heart attack, hmm. but you definitely had to have a heart attack uh, over 50, kidney function had to be okay, no smoking for three months. Um, those are the biggest qualifiers. And they put all these people, it was a double-blinded, randomized, placebo-controlled trial. In other words, um, the patients that I, I didn't know if I was giving them chelation or just juice, just water, you know, a meaningless IV. And then those two groups of people, I don't know if, it's, if you can see this, if this, if, if this mm -hmm. visual will help, but so everybody had to have a heart attack. And then one group got the chelation, the other group didn't. And then in each one of those groups, half of them got a high dose multivitamin and the other, other side of the group got a fake vitamin, a vitamin, a pill with nothing in it. Okay. And so, uh, the, uh, there were, over, uh, there were like, um, they, it was from 2002 to 2011, a little over 1,700 patients, uh, 134 sites in, in the United States and Canada, and they, they infused over 55,000 um, IVs. And they, there was one questionable death. Now, there were a bunch of folks lurking in the shadows that were like a, you know, a, an angry rat under a table hoping for a crumb. Uh, they were... They, they, some folks really made some outrageous things trying to destroy poor Peter the study, um, and uh, they failed. And so it, it proved once and for all it's safe with over all the those with that many infusions, and there was one possible questionable death. But you're dealing with people that already had a heart attack. I mean, this is the group. That's the yeah, group. it's already a suspect oh. group. Uh, <laughs> then, the, now, but the biggest surprise was. In non-diabetics, it reduced the heart attacks about 20%, but in the diabetics, it reduced heart attacks right at 40%. Oh. And that is huge. There's nothing else that has that kind of track record in terms of atherosclerosis, you know, and, and people improving. And so they looked at the diabetic numbers like, holy cow. And so they now tacked two is they're no longer enrolling patients as far as I know. I think they're in the process of accumulating the data and kind of counting it up and seeing if they if they indeed have reproduced TAC-1. Now, another thing is you may or may not know about chelation. Its claim to fame is pulling out heavy metals, pulling heavy metals out of the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you were born before 1995, <laughs> And if you happen to have driven up and down the road, you did so in a cloud of lead from the car that was in front of you. And so uh, the, all of us have all kinds of lead in us, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And 
what another big source that I think folks might not know about is, is that the amalgam fillings that have been being used up until recently, and you have to ask for it to still get non-amalgam fillings as far as I know. And so, I mean, you're putting mercury based um, in your, in your mouth. And, and so these mercury amalgam fillings, um, and then every time you grind your teeth, which uh, unfortunately I'm one of those people who at night too, you know, uh, um, my life's not unstressed. And so apparently I grind my teeth at night, you're heating that up, which then creates that vapor that gets reabsorbed right into your bloodstream. And, and so there's tons of different sources, the fire retardant chemicals, the things that are in um, another big source is um, ladies cosmetics. Um, I mean, goodness, uh, just laden with many chemicals. Uh, and so again, it's not just all the things that we already know about. It's the things that we should be reading our labels and understanding just how much the sources of toxicity and heavy metals. And that's why I think that this is so much fun for us because not only are we speaking to the heart disease and the diabetes and the, the crowd that's out there, we're also talking to every single person who walks the earth who, like I said, you know, has used any of these things. And, I, I, and so that's the majority. Absolutely. And there's this website, I believe it's www.safecosmetics. I think it's a .org, maybe a .com, but you can look up a, uh, a cosmetic. Because ladies, by the time ladies, between waking up and walking out the front door, they, they have exposed themselves to over 100 chemicals. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, um, you can go to um, uh, beautycounter.com. is another great website because... Um, they have compiled the never list, which um, when we look at that, it's the chemicals that should never be in anything, any product that you use. And it's this list of, um, well, it's right back here behind me, of hundreds of things. We keep it on the wall. Um, and uh, for ladies to know why and what should they should be, food, uh, be reading on their cosmetics. And then uh, another good site while we're mentioning things is ewg.org the environmental working group and they actually have an app which i have on my phone so that you can actually go into the store and it's healthy li healthy living or food scores and you scan it it pulls up your camera and you scan the qr code um, or the, um, the checkout code and then it'll pull up your pro that product and it'll tell you how cancerous how allergic it is, and then um, a toxicity rate huh. right there on the product or the food in, uh, in food scores. So, all right, as we diverge, but I mean, there's so many facets to this. Well, we're going to diverge again since you brought up the wall. You and I will be jabbing around. We're going to forget it. Um, the, you know, diet and exercise. Oh, you never heard that before. But there's <laughs> another, there's another uh, contributor to the uh heart disease, strokes, blood pressure, you name it. Um, and that is stress. And the number one way to relieve stress that has been studied since the, since the late fifties and actually even, even beyond that, but recently there've been all kinds of studies and there's up on the wall right behind some of you've read it, but there's going to be a transcendental meditation introduction course this coming Saturday. Uh, at what, 1130 or 11? Yeah, 1130. 1130. So it is the best way to relieve stress. So whatever that's for. Now, um, the chelation, chely is the Greek word for claw. And if you use your imagination, the chelating agents have sort of a, a claw-like look to them. And the, uh, the pinchers on the claw have a positive charge or negative charge metals have a plus charge so you get the plus minus thing going and it mm -hmm. removes and pulls the heavy metals out of the body and for the most part they they leave through the urine but some comes out in the, in the feces but uh, if you were to eat a sandwich today it had a whole bunch of lead in it you probably wouldn't know it unless it had an awful lot of lead but what i'm going with this is for the next two weeks your blood levels of lead would go up and then they would start falling and some of the lead would be excreted. But what's horrific is a lot of the lead would be deposited throughout the body. Lead has a real uh, fondness for going to the bone. Mm. And when 
Uh, that's why one of the reasons when ladies go through menopause, their hormones change and they don't build bone so well. As a matter of fact, they start replacing things in the bone and they start pulling lead out of their bone. And the next thing you know, a lady that never had high blood pressure in her life, also she's got high blood pressure and it's because of the lead. Interesting. Oh, it's horrific. And there's no such thing as a safe level of lead in the body. But but you can have a whole bunch of lead and it is not going to show up in the blood. It hides in the tissue. So if you really want to find out, we have to do multiple biopsies from brain, heart, you know, all, no. all the things we're not going to do. <laughs> None of those are a good idea. All right. But, uh, but the chelation has been proven to be safe and effective. But unfortunately, the mainstream medicine docs still hold on and they don't realize that it was published in uh cardiology in the Amer in another journal called the american heart journal i mean these are big time journals these aren't mad magazine or the <laughs> national Enquirer. <laughs> yeah it, it's legit and uh it's it, it is a legitimate therapy that is safe and effective and how many of people like so one of the things you know i know i'm i'm gonna set myself up and i, I want to come in and, and go through the process uh but let's say somebody like um i have uh your number up here and they're wanting to get in touch with you and they want to become a new patient and of course you call and schedule your new patient you let them know what uh, his office what you're wanting to do and and things but let's give them an overview of the process like to find out if you need heavy metal detoxification or chelation and then what the process looks like in the office. Well, uh, actually, if you've been breathing air and drinking water, there's a probability you got a little bit of toxicity of some flavor. Oh, absolutely. And, and if you don't, I want to come live with you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got another room. Yeah. Um, and so, but, we have a lot of put a lot of emphasis on supplements, taking supplements on a regular basis, and it's hard to say uh, enough good about vitamin C because vitamin C is a weak chelating agent. Okay. Uh, and but getting rid of the metals helps with the circulation. It helps all the enzymes work. It helps the you know the brain work better. I mean, it it helps everything from head to toe. And so it's so when we look at um, you know that process, you know you come in you you. you then isn't there like a 24 hour urine test as a, to set up a baseline or then do we go through the chelation? How does all that happen? If someone decides that they'd like to have chelation, the protocol, which was written in the eighties and it's the same protocol that was used in TAC and no one has seen any reason to change the protocol because it's safe, effective, and it works. Uh, you, the, IV takes about an hour and a half. If you want to do a three hour IV, you can do it, but most choose to do the hour and a half. As crazy as it sounds, it seems to be as effective as a three hour. And uh, going with the protocol, it's sort of like the chelation starts to shake the tree. And so at the fourth IV or fourth chelation, and actually we collect a six hour urine to see uh, how much heavy metals are coming out. And uh, that way, that's kind of where your baseline is. It's, it's not that helpful to get a, uh, a blood level of metals because that, if, you, if it is positive, then that means you've had an acute exposure. And, uh, but it's, that isn't common. And so, okay. we do, but it's, if someone wants to pay for it, we will be glad to yeah, do if it. Yeah, if your kid ate some lead-based paint, and you want to see what the time goes, you know what I mean? That would be a you know direct thing. And so, um, and then, you know, so they come in like, what, what's the average number of uh, chelations that somebody might do? Is it just four or is there, I mean, is it 10 or? Uh, well, a, it depends on, on how, on the condition that your condition is in. Nice. <laughs> and, but the uh, studies are based around 40. Now, if someone comes in and they're knocking down microglycerin because they got chest pain and they're just, you know, really at death's door, then, you know, doing it like uh, three times a week is a, not a bad idea, but that's, that's okay. kind of one extreme. And that's, that's an hour and a half, three times a week, which I mean, goodness, that's not much. It beats being dead. It does. It really, <laughs> it really does. Absolutely. But uh, for uh, the average, you know, if you say, Hey, I'm not having any real major problems, but I know I've got to have the exposure then doing it, you know, once a week, uh, twice a month, even once a month is, is not going to hurt and it's going to help.
Absolutely. And so, you know, these are the kind of, you know, the levels to which people um, hopefully will be able to um, say to themselves, well, I know I've had those kind of things. I've worked in these environments or I mean, just like if you are diabetic, if you have heart disease and one of the big things and the reason that you and I get along so well is, is that we talk about things from the perspective of potential in that our job is to keep you not just from death's doorstep, but actually reaching your health potential and your life potential. And if you want to have longevity, which is a huge topic these days, and then, then you've got to be doing the things up front. Like um, I, I remember hearing on, on off days, uh, LeBron James was doing like 12 hours of self-care. Yeah. And then, and then on days of like the practices and games and stuff like that, he was doing at least like six hours. And so, I mean, this guy is constantly maintaining himself while he knows this vehicle is his ticket to money. Yep. And, and he's now getting older and he's still super amazing and, and, and everything, the things that he's done with the sport. And so we've got to start learning from the um, activities of some of these people who are um, making a lot of money and they're, they're supporting their bodies the way that we all wish we would. If, but the fact is, is that we can do these small steps. I like the idea of, I mean, who doesn't have an hour and a half once a month? or twice a month or something to go in to do something that you know is gonna be stripping the the heart disease and heavy metals and pulling out all that toxicity. And reducing your risk of cancer. It's because those heavy metals, they contribute to, to cancers. Absolutely, and it's the toxic environment that we place the body parts in that creates that that set up for the genetic problems that happen to, in that toxic environment. And that's one of the things that with cancer, I mean, it's not just the gene, it's what happens to the gene in the environment that damages it. And then that cell goes out of control and we get whatever it is, prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, but it's the environment that that body is in that allows that tissue to make that change. And then we have cancer, that dysfunction leads to the disease. And so, when we think about these things, I really want to touch base again back on to that Transcendental Meditation Workshop. Uh, uh, there, uh, Charles Bray will be here from Nashville uh, at 1130 this Saturday, 1130 a.m. Um, for a free introductory lecture. I know uh, if I can divulge, you know, I, I've been practicing um, TM for many years, and it's definitely played a role in my ability to manage stress and to reach the potential that I have and uh, the levels that I have in my own life. And I, I would guess that you have a similar experience with it. And, yep. and so these are the things, um, it's just one more thing that we can do to, again, constantly be able to allow ourselves to kind of brush away the negative things that are constantly coming at us from the air, the poison food, the, um, the water we drink and the sources and be able to make our bodies more resilient. And so if you have any questions, um, you can text them here and um, we'll be glad to answer those directly for you. Where's your practice located? I am uh, just off the first or last exit in the state of Georgia on 575. <laughs> Locally, it is known as the Costco exit. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what I think. That's what I call it. It's a 353 for, you know, so. For the rest of the world. Yeah, in the, in, in a, uh, a, in the Gateway Mall. Okay. And so uh, easy, it's easy to get to. Easy plenty to of parking. To. Yeah, plenty. plenty. So. Yeah, and so it's really, um, I, I drive there uh, regularly, both to his office and to Costco. And, and so literally it's uh, 35 minutes and it's totally uh, accessible for folks here in the tri-state area because, you know, our, our main um, area of viewers is going to be between um, Ider, Alabama, and over to Scottsboro, and then um, here in Trenton and um, parts of Chattanooga. And so the closer you come this way, the easier it is. And, yep. you know, one of the things uh, that I, I've always enjoyed was your idea of, well, part of my job is to keep you away from people like me. Yeah. And that, that's, a, that's a great statement in the fact that we need to continually, and you do, as helping people stay well. Well, and the big picture is, you know, when you're under 30 years old, you are indeed bulletproof. I mean, just virtually 
almost nothing happens. Sadly, you know, you don't really start paying the piper until you know, like 50s or 60s. And your, your, the disease process starts in the 30s when you kind of outrun your youthful coverage. And so it, like we were talking earlier, it doesn't just happen like that. It's, it's, it's a, you know, a, a accumulation of all sorts of little bitty insults. For example, no one, you know, smokes a cigarette, one cigarette and gets COPD. You know, you've got to, you know, you've got to smoke, all, you know, you, and bad mm -hmm. news is you can get away with smoking for almost like 15 years, maybe 20, and pretty much be unscathed. But most folks get addicted and, you know, 20 yeah. years becomes 40. And so, but exactly, but, but they, they add up. And so starting to say, wait a minute, if you, because I tell folks, if you don't take care of you, who will? Absolutely. And, and if you don't have time for you, you're going to have a lot of time in a casket. <laughs> and, and, and that's a lot of extra time. And, and the fact is, is, you know, it's like people coming in here. Um, they're in and out of here in 20 minutes, once or twice a week when they're on or once a week or twice a month if they're on wellness care. And, and in the beginning, it takes sometimes more in, to get them back to where they need to be and then in, to maintain your health. And it's like anything else, um, folks. There is no fast food fix. You cannot pharmaceutical your way out of a problem that you've lifestyled your way into. And so you have to lifestyle your way back out of it. And this would be one of those topics. Well, um, we've run out of time. I greatly appreciate you being here and taking the time. And so again, you can uh, call his office to schedule your appointment and uh, get set up for chelation therapy or use his office as um, your GP. And so folks, I hope that this has been illuminating and brought you another step into what you can put into the principle of your life so that you get those life-changing results. And we'll see you back here on Health of Second Opinion soon. And Saturday. Oh, and Saturday. Yes, absolutely. All right. <laughs>